Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I hope you're all doing really well. So today we're going to be reading, well I'm going to be reading chapters 3 and 4 of Healing in the Dark and I really hope you enjoy it. I'm mostly doing this the same day as the Dark Demigods video because that was really short and I'm going to give you guys something to read. So let's get into it. As Will's point of view. As Nico passed out, he was struggling. Will looked quizzically at the boy. He checked the IV, which was still securely in place. He nodded to himself and focused on Nico's other arm. The werewolf claws had left some pretty deep wounds. Since Nico had neglected to report to the infirmary until today, he knew there would be some pretty brutal scarring, but hopefully the magic in the thread would help with the scarring. He picked up the glowing needle to begin sewing Nico's torn skin. He started singing an ancient Greek hymn to his father as he began to close up the gaping wounds. Singing was one of the many talents of Apollo's children that allowed patients to heal faster. He was focused on his work but noticed Nico settle a little more comfortably on his bed as Will sang. A grin worked its way onto his face as he sang just a little louder. Will pulled the final stitch through Nico's wound. He looked at the pale boy's face, satisfied with his handiwork. He grabbed nearby bandages and wrapped Nico's arm. He gently placed Nico's arm down. He stood and walked over to his table and medicine cabinet and placed the thread and needle into the special pouch. He closed the cabinet and threw away his gloves. He needed to examine the rest of Nico. Will looked at the scars on Nico's wrist. They appeared to have been made by a razor blade but looked about a year old. Maybe Nico had stopped hurting himself, but... Judging what he had recently been through, Will definitely doubted it. He guessed that he would find similar more recent scars somewhere else on Nico's body. Will sighed with concern. He wished the son of Hades would open up to someone, but he did understand how difficult it was to talk about it. He looked at Nico's face, which had relaxed while he was sleeping. He looked so young and innocent. Will was reminded of himself. That the son of Hades was only 14. When he was awake, Nico had the air of maturity, maturity who had seen a lot. He looked so peaceful sleeping, almost like an angel, as his last name suggested. Will smiled at Nico, brushing his hair out of the sleeping boy's eyes. Nico nuzzled into Will's hand, which made the latter blush. He looked around to see if anyone had seen, forgetting that the curtains were drawn around the bed. Will removed his hand, realizing that he still had to finish his examination. He removed Nico's shoes and rolled up his pants. Or tried to. They were skinny jeans, so they didn't go very far. Will needed to see if the damage on his legs was as bad as the rest of him, but he didn't want to push Nico's comfort level. Nico would probably not be very happy if he discovered that Will had taken off his clothes while he was sleeping. Will had decided to wait to check on Nico's legs until Nico changed into something looser. With that, he, with that, he tucked the boy under the covers and adjusted the pillows and left Nico alone to sleep. All the wounds and bruises all over his body would eventually start fading with the nectar and unicorn drought and IV, but nectar and ambrosia only had so much power. The only, they only healed recent and fresh wounds, so past scars would stay on the body forever. They were magic, but they couldn't fix all wounds, especially not emotional ones. Will knew that all too well from experience. Contemplating unseen wounds, Will sat down on at one of the desks in the infirmary to work on to work on some paperwork. Dinner came and went, and night fell. Will stayed in the infirmary, having one of his siblings bring him a meal from the pavilion. He was sitting so he could see Nico, who was still dead to the world, and the rest of the patients. There were only two remaining, not including Nico, and they were set to be discharged tomorrow morning. The infirmary was silent, except for the light snores of a patient. Soon, Nico would be the only camper in the infirmary that filled Will with butterflies. At the moment, he was the only healer in the infirmary as his siblings had all gone to dinner. One of the rules of the infirmary was that at least one healer needed to be present whenever there were any patients. Since Will was the head counselor and the best healer the camp had, he was also the head doctor and therefore in charge of the infirmary, whose silence was broken. By the door swinging open, voices filled the room as Will stood to tell... Whoever just came in to be quiet. If you don't 
mind, we have patients who need their rest, so please stop talking, Will said, quietly but forcefully. The demigods who had entered quieted down and stopped and stepped further into the infirmary, into the light of the lamp. Will saw that it was Percy Jackson and Jason Grace. He sighed. It's past eight. Visiting hours are over for the day, boys. You can come back tomorrow morning. Good, good night, Will said sternly. Percy and Jason exchanged a look before Jason looked back to Will. Percy snorted. This isn't a real hospital, Will. He was cut off by Jason elbowing him. Hey, man, I'm sorry. We're just here to check on Nico. He's our good friend, and we want to make sure he's okay, you know? He's been through a lot, Jason said pleadingly. Will saw the sincerity in his eyes, so he relented, choosing to ignore Percy's snide comment. Fine, but don't wake him up under any circumstance. Understand? He has not He has not gotten a lot of sleep recently. Jason and Percy nodded their understanding, so Will led them to where Nico was sleeping. Jason sat in the chair by Nico's head, and Percy stood on the other side as if they were his bodyguards. Some hair had fallen into Nico's face, and Jason brushed it out of the way. Will's stomach twisted in jealousy until he realized that it was just a brotherly kind of thing. How long has he been out for? Jason asked, concerned, dotting his voice. Seven or eight hours, and he's been asleep the whole time, Percy asked. Looking surprised? Yeah, is that surprising? Well, yeah, his life hasn't been easy the, cast the past couple of months. So, I'm surprised you got him to sleep. He usually stays awake for days at a time to keep the nightmares at bay, Percy explained. For days? He doesn't just sleep to avoid nightmares, Will asked. Will was in intimately familiar with the nightmares demigods could have. He had some pretty terrifying ones himself, but he hadn't known anyone to have that severe nightmares that made one dread to go to sleep and to cause you to stay awake for days at a time. What would you have to see to cause that? Yeah, I mean, he's been through hell and back alone, for that matter. Like, sure, I went through Tartarus with Annabeth, but we saw a Miss Ted muted version of it, a Miss Ted fusion version of it. And at one point, I saw it for what it truly was, and Percy looked taunted as the lost in a terrible memory. Jason reached over Nico and grabbed Percy's shoulder, asking if he was okay. Percy blinked, looked at Jason, and smiled bleakly, affirming he was okay. And I almost went insane, though I only saw it for a few moments. We haven't really talked about it. But I'm pretty sure Nico saw for what, what, what it truly was the whole time he was down there. Judging by how broken he looked when we got him out. I have the worst nightmares about that hellscape, so I can't imagine the kind of dreams Nico has about it. Will had never seen Percy speak so seriously before. The haunted look had returned to the son of Poseidon's eyes as he gazed at Nico. Will was processing what Nico had said and about Nico being through hell and back, and he said that he and Annabeth went through it too. Oh my goodness. Will realized that Percy didn't mean hell figuratively. Wait, so Nico went through Tartarus too? Like, on his own? Jason and Percy looked at him in surprise. Yeah, you, yeah didn't, didn't you know that? Jason asked warily as if he wasn't supposed to share that information. Will shook his head. No wonder Nico looked so broken. He had been to Tartarus, alone. Witnessed the pure terror of the pit. I don't really know how much... I don't really know much about Nico, which is kind of making treatment extremely difficult. He won't open up and it kills me because I know he's hurting, but he won't let me help. Percy and Jason exchanged yet another look. If they didn't have girlfriends, Will would have assumed they were dating given all the looks they exchanged. Percy was still looking at Jason as he spoke, as if asking him how much information he should reveal. That's just how Nico is, unfortunately. He won't let anyone help. Percy looked back to Will. It's not too surprising, though. He has had to deal with life alone since he was 10 years old. He had vaguely remembered Nico coming to camp for a week or so, when he was a lot younger before disappearing. There had been search parties, but the son of Hades had not been found until he had appeared at the Battle of the Labyrinth. I knew he left camp when his sister died, but I didn't know why. Then he came back to help us against Luke's forces in the Labyrinth. Percy nodded in affirmation. Yeah, I don't know the real reason he ran, but I know he spent a lot of time in the Labyrinth. 
We ran into him on our quest, so we knew that we needed help finding Luke. He was pivotal in stopping Kronos from getting us while we were in the maze. While heroes always recounted their quest when they returned successfully, details were sometimes left out, like the fact that Nico had been more involved in the quest that Will remembered hearing about so many summers before. As soon as the battle was over, he disappeared again, Will said. Then he reappeared at the Battle of Manhattan. He was at Camp Sporadically till you disappeared, Percy. Then he left to search for you and the rest. Will trailed off, hoping the demigods in front of him would fill in the blanks. Percy considered Will very carefully, probably determined what to or not to tell him. I don't know most of the details, but he found Hazel and brought her to Camp Jupiter. He was serving as an ambassador when I arrived. After our Alaskan adventure, he started looking for the doors of death, and that's when he got pulled in. No one knows what happened to him down there, not even me or Annabeth. Jason spoke up. He looked utterly defeated when we did rescue him, so we didn't really push him. He was pretty quiet the whole way to the House of Hades. Jason was avoiding both Percy and his own eyes as he spoke, as if he was hiding something. Then he went off with Hedge and Reyna. All of them, all three of them, have been pretty tight-lipped about their experiences. Percy sighed. All we know is that Nico almost killed himself with all the shadow jumps he made. Will realized that he only knew a fraction of Nico's story, but he couldn't imagine what the son of Hades had been through, the pain, eternal and external, physical and emotional, that Nico had and was experiencing was unfathomable. Will opened his mouth to say something when the son of Hades stirred. Nico had a dream of sleep, which had been nice. He didn't have... He did have some influence over his dreams, but with the memories of Tartarus weighing down on him, he had no control over his dreams recently, so having a dreamless sleep was a refreshing change. He wanted to go back to sleep, but he heard voices whispering above him. He looked utterly defeated when we did rescue him, so we didn't really push him. He was pretty quiet the whole way to the house of Hades, Jason's voice said to his right, then he went off with Hedge and Reyna. All three of them have been pretty tight-lipped about their experiences. All we know is that Nico almost killed himself with all the shadow jumps he made. Percy's voice sounded on his left. So his friends were talking about him as he slept, probably with Will. Nico felt a bubble of anger develop in his chest. He didn't like it when people talked about him behind his back. He was not able to control the narrative of what people thought about him. To prevent any further conversation about him, he decided to alert the others that he was awake. He started moving as though he was waking up. His eyes fluttered open. He was surprised to see Jason and Percy standing over his head. Talking about me, Nico couldn't stop the confrontational words that came out of his mouth. The two boys in front of him had the decency to look ashamed. Nico? Look, I'm sorry, man. It's not their fault, Will's voice cut across their apologies. Nico glanced at the foot of his bed where Will was standing, his blue eyes locked into Nico's. I asked him about your history. Nico scowled as he tried to push himself into a sitting position. Will rushed over to push him back onto the pillows. I know you are upset, but you aren't going anywhere, death boy. Nico rolled his eyes at the nickname. I wasn't, I was just trying to sit up with that. Will shifted gears and helped Nico sit up. Adjusting the pillows behind him. I don't like being looked down on. Nico helped the three demigods understood the double connotation of the words. Percy scoffed. Come on, Nico. Don't be like that. We are our friends, Nico. We respect your privacy, Jason reassured. You can't blame Will for wanting to know about your history, Percy defended. He is your doctor for Poseidon's sake. There is no reason why it's... There is a reason why it's my history, because I'm the one who lived it, Nico said, scathingly. I pushed them to tell me, Nico, Will reminded. They were not spilling your secrets, just telling me about your recent history, what your recent history was, and where you'd been. Will looked sincere, and Nico believed he was telling the truth. He grunted, whatever. A brief silence settled over the four demigods. Anyways, because we are friends and we care about you, we came to check on you, Percy said, 
How are you feeling? Nico shrugged, watching his will slipped out of the dividers. Once he thought the son of Apollo was out of earshot, he punched Percy in the arm. Ouch! Percy exclaimed, grabbing his arm. What did you say to him? Nico whispered, shouted. Nico, we didn't tell him anything personal, just the basics, Jason assured. Being that we found you in the labyrinth, that you that you found me at Camp Jupiter, that you helped rescue me and Annabeth, then how you got the Athena statue here with Coach and Reyna. That was it, Percy rubbed his arm. When Nico looked suspiciously at him, he held up three fingers, scouts on her. Nico looked at Percy and then at Jason. If either of them had mentioned his sexuality, Nico would obliterate them. But Percy seemed like he was telling the truth. Fine, Nico settled against his pillows. I guess I trust you. You better. I did save your life, Percy reminded, smiling. And I got you out of Tartarus. A dense silence fell over the boys with the mention of that place. Nico watched Percy's smile fade as sea green eyes looked down. Nico lightly touched his hand, causing Percy to regain eye contact. Nico softly nodded, reminding Percy that he was there for him. Jason broke the silence. How are you doing, though? Nico, did Will fix you up? Nico looked at his arm. There was a new bandage over his arm where the werewolf lacerations were. He didn't unwrap the bandage, but the pain had been feeling in that arm since he had gotten the wounds had lessened considerably. My arm feels loads better, Nico admitted. I would hope so. I spent the better part of an hour sewing it back together, Will had reappeared. He was holding a brown ba paper bag. Next time, don't try to play healer. That wasn't mean. That was Reyna. Blame her, Nico protested. I'm gonna tell her you said that, Percy joked. Nico looked at Percy. He seemed happy, but Nico could see right through his facade. He had glimpsed the raw pain Percy was experiencing from his time in Tartarus when he had just mentioned it. His eyes like Nico's looked shattered. Although he was doing a good job of hiding it, Nico could tell how much it affected Percy. Percy's hands, which usually usually bursting with energy, were lying flat on his lap. His joking manner had an own undertone of sadness. Are you okay, Nico? You just zoned out. Jason waved his hand in front of Nico's face. The, the son of Hades blinked. Yeah. Last had the sleeping drought wearing off, I guess, Nico excused, but Will looked concerned. He set the paper bag on the bedside table as he approached Nico's bed. He pushed past Percy to fiddle with the IV. The sleeping drought should have worked its way through your s system by now. Maybe I got the wrong propor pro proportion of nectar and sleeping drought. Much to Nico's surprise, Will gently grabbed his chin. Nico flinched at the sudden movement, but Will just turned Nico's head so he could look at his patient's face. Will's eyes searched his eyes on and his face. He placed the back of his head on Nico's forehead. You don't have a fever from the nectar, but holy Hera, you are freezing, Will exclaimed. Do you want another blanket? I spend as much time with the dead as I do with the living, so I have a lower body, body temperature the most. So no, I don't need another blanket. I'm fine, Nico explained. Will nodded, stepping back. Percy grinned. Well, we can see that you are in very capable hands here. Nico could see that Percy was trying to get a rise of him. Shut it, Jackson. I'm just messing with you, Nico. Lighten up, Nico rolled his eyes. If you keep rolling your eyes like that, you're going to get them You're gonna get them stuck, Jason joked. Nico mentally face palmed. Kill me now. Will come to his rescue. Okay, stop harassing my patient. Can y'all try not to strangle each other while I'll get one of my patients for the night shift? Percy saluted. Yes, sir. Jason's Will smirked as he rolled the tray table at the end of Nico's bed so that it was in front of him. He grabbed the paper bag from the bedside table and turned it over. A sandwich and an apple rolled out. I made some food while you were asleep and swiped an apple from the pavilion for you. Will pulled something from his scrub pocket. It was ambrosia in a baggie. Try to eat something so that you can eat the ambrosia, okay? Nico nodded to appease his healer. I'm also going to refresh in the bathroom and take a shower, Will informed. So y'all can stay until me and Kayla get back. Please not try please try not to burn down the infirmary while I'm gone. No promises No promises, Percy joked. Will rolled his eyes. You're you are in charge, Nico, he joked as he turned to leave. He turned back one last time before walking out. And for Zeus's sake, keep quiet. Percy and Jason 
both chuckled for a moment before before they came before they became focused on Nico. Percy grinned. So that's your type, huh? I may be in a hospital bed, but I can still annihilate you. Percy laughed at Nico's threat. Yeah, right. You couldn't beat me if you tried, Neeks. Is that a challenge, Kelped? Bring it on, Death Boy. You and me duel as soon as you get out of here. You're on. Nico accepted the challenge. <clears throat> Jason cleared his throat. Not to smash this budding bromance, but you heard Will. You need to eat something, Nico. Nico looked with dread at his meal. He didn't really feel like eating, but he knew the two guards on either side of him would not let him skip it. So he grabbed the apple, taking a bite out of it. It was more of a sick joke, but Nico preferred pomegranates over any other fruit at this point. After a couple of small bites, he set the apple back down. Is that all you are eating, Jason asked, concern in his voice. Nico scowled. Will doctors me enough. I don't need you two telling me what to do. Yeah, but you gotta eat the ambrosia so you can heal up, Percy reminded him. Nico didn't respond, so he grabbed the sandwich and wrapping it. Come on, it's PB and J. He waved the sandwich in front of Nico's face. Nico grimaced, pushing Percy's hand away. Sometimes just the smell of food made him nauseous. Percy, Percy, stop it. With Jason's authoritative voice, Percy stopped. Nico, are you okay? I'm fine, okay. I just don't want to eat. Jason searched his eyes for a reason. Yeah, but you need to heal too, Jason said, indicating to the ambrosia. Nico loosely tugged on his IV. I've been healing all day. At least finish the apple, Jason suggested. Nico shrugged, grabbing the apple again. He thought he could stomach that, at least. Sweet! Snack time! Percy exclaimed. He took a big bite of the sandwich, finishing half of it in one minute. Jason looked at him, exasperated. Percy noticed Jason looking at him with his mouth full. He tried to speak. What? You want a bite? He held out the sandwich to Jason. Jason snatched it, rewrapping it. Nico might get hungry later. After taking the last bite of the apple, Nico thought he would be full for at least a day. While he wasn't starving himself, he ate very little in a day. His stomach still accustomed to when he was living off one pomegranate seed a day. He swallowed down the ambrosia, which tasted like the pasta his mother used to cook for him and Bianca. Nico was surprised he even remembered what that tasted like. He had his memories of Italy wiped away in the liver leaf, but Nico guessed they were slowly starting to come back. Jason and Percy kept up the light conversation with Nico, talking about the events of the day and the ongoing search for Leo. Nico could see how strange Jason looked, with worry and sadness about losing his best friend. He was trying to mask it to be supportive of Nico, but Nico understood his sadness. He had felt terrible when he discovered that Leo had deceived his friends, and he recalled told that it took told that it took on Hazel for her to hide his secret plan. It was then he realized Jason had said something and was looking for Nico for an answer. I'm sorry, I wasn't listening. What'd you say? I was just saying that person and I are going to go soon. We gotta go back to our cabins before a curfew. Oh, okay, then Nico said, looking outside. It was dark out, but only light coming from the lamp within the infirmary and the waning moon. Although Nico had gotten eight hours of sleep, he was still exhausted. You should get some sleep, Nico. No pun intended, but you look dead on your feet, Percy said. Eerie, Nico thought. It was like Percy had read my thoughts. To save Jason and Percy any concern, Nico decided to pretend to sleep. Yeah, okay, I guess I will sleep. He settled more comfortably against the pillows. Jason looked relieved. We will leave you be then. We will just wait till Will comes back. Then we will be off. We'll come to see you tomorrow, okay, Jason said. Nico nodded, which prompted Jason and Percy to get up. They both stood guard in the opening in the dividers, waiting for Will to return. They turned off the lamp, leaving the infirmary in near darkness, though the moon flooded in the infirmary, giving a little illumination. Nico shut his eyes to give the impression that he was sleeping, though his mind was racing. During the past ten hours, Nico had listened to the whispering conversation between oh past 10 minutes nico had listened to the whispered conversation before between jason and percy about their concern for him suddenly their voices stopped as the door to the infirmary opened spilling some light into the dark room which nico saw through the his eyelids nico didn't open his eyes but he heard two sets of footsteps wills he assumed in one of his siblings he started talking in hushed what tones with jason did he eat yeah, but not that much. He finished the ambrosia, though. Good. But I wish he had eaten more. He's all skin and bones, Will sounded worried. 
Everyone always sounds so worried when talking about me. Yeah, otherwise, he's been good. He didn't talk much. He settled in about ten minutes ago, Percy whispered. Nico almost snorted. Apparently, he was a better actor than he thought. Good, good. Nico heard Will coming over to him. He slowed his breathing. He almost flinched when he felt Will's warm hand encircle his wrist to take his pulse. Nico could smell the freshly washed hair of Will, and goodness, did it smell good. You guys better get going before curfew. We wouldn't want the patrol harpies to find you, Will chuckled. Thanks for watching Nico for me. Kayla and I can handle it from here. Percy, Jason and Percy murmured farewells. And Nico heard them firmly doors open and close again. He heard Kayla and Will checking on the other patients. Nico closed his eyes, trying to keep him aw himself awake. He didn't want any more nightmares, and since the sleeping drought was out of his system... He knew they were sure to come. He saw mo movement out of the corner of his eye and snapped his eyes shut. But the scent of it, by the scent of him, it was Will again. Nico felt him leaning over his body. He felt hovering above Nico's. You might have fooled Jason and Percy, but there's no fooling me, Death Boy. Will whispered, his lips centimeters away from Nico's ear. Nico squirmed a little, not expecting the healer to be so close. Will chuckled a little and continued. I didn't say anything to them because I didn't want them to worry. Please try to get some sleep. Nico nodded, trying to settle more comfortably on the pillows. There was a moment of silence before the bed creaked as Will sat down. Nico's heart started racing as he wondered why Will had sat. The son of Apollo started singing in ancient Greek. Nico suddenly felt a wave of peacefulness set over him. Will started running his fingers along Nico's back. Under his shirt, Nico arced his back, but then relaxed into Will's touch, which was unbelievably soothing. Nico felt, suddenly felt very sleepy as he sank deeper into the pillows. Nico felt like he was five again, his mother singing him to sleep. With that as his final thought, he drifted to sleep. And that, my friends, is the end of chapter four. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye!